All right, today is the day, and it is finally a little bit cooler here in Southern Oregon. It is typically, well, I shouldn't say typical, nothing typical about it, but we have had a record-breaking temperatures for about two months solid, always over 100 degrees, and that is nothing typical, like I said, for this area. We on occasion in the summertime maybe hit 100 degrees for a week or so, but it has been like two months straight, and it is getting unbearable. But it has broken and we're about 80, 85 degrees today. And so I thought I would get out there in the shop that's not air conditioned and do some welding. I am way behind on a bunch of welding projects. One of those being the hubs, the uprights. And so we're gonna take a look at that today. I have started on the rears and we are gonna jump into that. But I must let you know that this is only part one. It has been a little bit more in-depth of a project than uh, might be fit into just one video. And I didn't get both second part of it done, so we're just going to do a part one video today. Working on the rear uprights. Let's jump in, take a look. Now this rear upright is connected by um, two dual spherical rod ends on the bottom and a ball joint at the top. So to connect that ball joint at the top, we're going to take a piece of uh, heavy bar stock, drill it out, and put a... 10 degree taper into it for the stud of the ball joint. And that little piece of uh, round stock is going to uh, fit into a piece of rectangular tubing, a little section of it that will hold it in place onto the rest of the pieces that are going to create our upright. So here I'm just cleaning up that uh, rectangular tubing stock. And I'm going to also drill or bore a big old hole in it because that uh, piece of material, that bar stock that we drilled out and made tapered, is going to fit in here and get welded into this piece. And that'll hold it in position into all the sheet metal parts that are going to create this upright. So the bar stock drilled out fits in here and we're going to go ahead and weld this thing firmly in place. That's going to take a weld that goes all the way around the circumference on both sides. And then I'm going to go ahead and also tack weld it on the inside where I can reach it. Of course the strength is all going to be in the box structure of this whole upright, but of course that's all going to be transferred through to that piece. Now when I'm welding around the circumference on the one end, the little uh, shoulder castle nut for that ball joint is going to have to sit flat on there and that weld kind of flowed out into that area so I just took it to the back to the milling machine and cleaned off that surface for the nut to fit down flat. Now I'm going to move on to the main box structure of this upright made out of a couple of uh, larger pieces of plate cut with a big old uh, six inch hole in the middle because the main structure of this thing is a piece of quarter inch by six inch piece of pipe. And it's going to be flanked on both sides by a couple of pieces of plate, like I said, with these big holes in it. And to hold that spacing on those, I've got a couple of perpendicular plates here with some slots and tabs. So I'm going to weld the first side up. Got the slots in their holes. Tack weld it on the inside. And then I'm going to go ahead and just uh, fill in our slots and tabs as another weld. Then here's the other side. Same thing, just gonna go in reverse this time and weld the slots and tabs first. And then I'm gonna drop in the piece of a uh, six inch pipe that's gonna make the main structure of this upright. Now there's a little bit of warpage occurred welding this perpendicular plates to these two main plates. So I'm gonna check it's for square on the side where it's gonna hook to the wheel, the main hub side. And then once I flip it over, I can see there's a little bit of distortion. So we're just going to throw some clamps on it to draw it back into position. That quarter inch tubing is not going to move at all. So we can square off of it and I'll tack weld it. I'm going to just tack weld that main tube in place because I've got a lot of things to fit around it. And if there's anything goes wrong, I want to be able to get it out of there easily. So the first thing I'm going to do once I've got that uh, main box of the upright done, is get ready to build the bottom section that's going to hold the spacing for our 
dual spherical rod ends that are going to be the main or the bottom joint on this upright. And when those spherical rod ends get bolted on to the for the chassis, I don't want it to crush this thing down, so I'm going to put a piece of tubing between there. Just so that when, like I said, you uh, torque the bolts down for those rod ends, it won't crush this part of the upright. Check it for a distance off of the round tube, which is our central positioning piece. And once I got it tacked well position, just going to go ahead and run a bead all the way around this thing. And that'll be the bottom end boxed in and pretty much complete for the bottom side. Now I need to uh, move on and get working on the upper ends. And so to create that upper end, we've got to put the sides on. Finish all our welds on that bottom end and we'll get onto the sides. So to do that, we're going to head back over to our uh, press brake and put a couple of 45 degree bends on the sides. One of those is going to run around the top and be the part that connects to our uh, ball joint. The other one's just going to tuck around the bottom and hook to that bottom box that we just created. So before I put that side on, I'm just going to jump inside and do some internal welds, hooking that uh, six inch tubing onto our main plates. Cause that's about to get closed off. Access denied. So we got the side plate on, tack it in place. Didn't quite get my 45 degree right. So I just hammer it down and we'll finish our weld, come back along the side, make the bend down and then uh, weld all the way across, hook our side piece to that bottom box. And then we'll just do the same thing for the other side. Now this thing is symmetrical to this point, but once we get further on, there'll be some differences between the right and left. Of course, one will be the, the bolting system for the brake caliper a little arm that extends off the opposite side that creates our uh, arm for our toe adjustment. Now here's our top. The 45 degree band's not perfectly lined up, so we're just gonna get it tacked right to the edge. Do a little uh, hammer adjustment. Get those gaps closed up. Try our uh, ball joint there. Need a little more adjustment. And I think now we're ready to go. Fits beautifully. So it's time to uh, weld in our uh, ball joint fitting. We'll run some beads across the top. Get it welded tight. Now you'll see also a little uh, gap up there. That needs to be another piece welded in there, but we don't have that one yet. That'll come later. But we're going to get a good weld across the top and across the bottom. And that will hold this thing. This thing will be totally enclosed within the box section. Um, not this video, but the next will show you the full closure of this area that holds that ball joint. But that's our welding on this. We're just going to clean this thing up and get ready for the next uh, process. And that is going to be right around these holes I'm grinding on now. That's where the brake caliper is going to bolt on. And we're, like I said, we're going to have a little arm that extends off the opposite side for our adjustment for toe. And another plate that holds the bearings into that steel tubing. And that'll be another video. All right, there you go. We have part one. In the next video, we will finish that thing up by putting the bearings on there. The a plate on the side where the brake caliper will bolt on and a little arm that will extend off the side for attaching the linkage for adjusting the toe on that back upright. Get that suspension all put together. And we'll of course in videos coming up since I am maybe back in the mood to do some welding again, we will be getting one more control arm in the front and the front hubs also built and we'll get that suspension in there. That will be exciting to get that thing sitting on its own feet. But anyway, that's our video for today. Come back. See us again.